What I do in the book is to look at eight particular passages, well, sometimes particular passages, in one case a whole book, the book of Isaiah, um, in one place an issue, but essentially to focus uh, narrowly and try and go deep rather than range across um, the whole Old Testament, which is what most Old Testament theologies do. So, for example, the first chapter um, is on the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is the one and only, which is how I argue it should be translated, so you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. So again, there is a translation that I discuss, but it's there on the page. And the question is, uh, how is this to be understood? And the verses that immediately follow, um, which talk about talking about these words, um, teaching them, writing them, displaying them on your body and on the doorposts of your house and writing them up on the, on the city gates. Um, because this has been a key passage for Jews historically and still today, something they frame their days and often their lives with the recitation of this. Um, when Jesus was asked what's the, uh, the great commandment, which is a sort of Jewish way of saying what's the really important bit in scripture, um, he cites this passage. So I try and dig a little. What is it saying about God? What is it saying about Israel's response to God? How have Jews understood it? How have Christians understood it? Because it's interesting that Jews make much of the, the instructions to, um, to write, to display, to you know, put it on the, the doorpost and so on. Um, but Christians tend to be quite disinterested in that because in the light of Jesus picking the up love of God and linking it with love of neighbour, um, Christians tend to lose focus on the immediate context in Deuteronomy and uh, are, as it were, moving elsewhere. And I, I try to reflect on some of the strengths and the weaknesses um, and how one can, as it were, learn from, um, from both approaches.